common mistake I see new simulation users making is related to how they apply their loads and constraints. So the other day during a flight to Toronto, I set out to demonstrate some simulation best practices using the skateboard model. In this case, I'm really only concerned with the board's performance, so we'll start by suppressing all but the selected. While this helps enormously in solve time, it causes me some issues when it comes to applying loads and constraints. You see, if I try to apply the force to the top of the board, representing the skater's weight, I'm unable to accurately limit the area where the load should be applied. I can use some sort of target limiting, an option when I use the vector or angle style definitions, but a circle isn't the imprint my feet leaving the snow the last time I checked. The same goes for constraining the model. When the trucks were suppressed, I lost an important piece of the puzzle, the load path from the board to the ground. And when defining constraints, I'm not afforded the same target limits we were offered when applying the loads. So let's see how we can address this. To start, we'll jump back into the modeling workspace and access a feature anyone using simulation will want to familiarize themselves with, split face. Using the split face, I can use a handful of methods to do just like it says. By splitting the faces, the model geometry will stay the same, but new artificial areas can be used for application of loads, constraints, mesh controls, appearances, and so on. The great news is that most of the time you can reuse geometry to create the splits. Here I'll use the bottom face of the trucks in the along vector style split. Just select the face to split, the splitting tool, and if needed, the projection direction can be adjusted. When I hide the rear trucks, you'll see the new face that was created. Perfect. I'll do the same on the front in warp speed, and just like that I have faces to constrain the model. So now let's flip the board over and see how we can do this without existing geometry. I haven't wasted time to model the skater, so I have to resort to another option, a sketch. I've already created this, so we'll toggle to show it from the browser, then jump back into using the split face tool. Using sketches to create split faces is just as simple as before. Select the face to split, splitting tool, and to help define this further, I'll use the closest point type. Because this sketch was done on the top surface of the board, the foot shape is projected properly without additional inputs. On the front end, I'll make one slight change. I'll select to use a split with surface, which essentially turns the sketch entities into a temporary extruded surface. This comes in handy when you want to split multiple faces from various bodies or components. One of those benefits of a unified workspace. Back in the simulation setup, we'll quickly load the foot locations and fix the areas where the board contacts the trucks. Using the local solve option, and all the while working offline, I can continue to solve and get results without needing to reconnect. I think at this time, I was flying right near the Nebraska-Iowa border. Anyway, in no time at all, I'll have results to start to post-process and make informed decisions on how I want the design to change. But before we get into those, let's explore another consideration. Rewind it back a bit. Did anyone think about how loads are applied across multiple phases back at this step? Obviously, if I had used the forces per entity, it would have applied 185 pounds to each phase, but what about if you don't select that? Does it divide the defined load by the number of faces selected? Or does the size of the face matter? Well, the answer is it does divide by the size of the face, which in this case is equal. But if I go back and edit the shape of one of the feet to represent a landing or as the skater prepares to do a kickflip, all of a sudden this gets more complicated. Because the back foot footprint is smaller, it'll now have some smaller portion of that load. But what exactly is it? I have no idea unless I go and measure those two faces and compare. That's why I'd recommend if you want specific loads on specific faces, you're best off creating each in its own definition. In this case, I want the majority of the weight to be on the front foot, and a portion of the rider's weight to be on the back foot. I can remove one of the faces from the earlier defined load, adjust the mass represented here, and add a second load, which can be defined at any value. Again, just like that, it's ready to run. After solving, the results get drastically more interesting, and I wasn't even over Wisconsin yet. I hope this helps you understand new ways of controlling and applying the loads and constraints the next time you're simulating something in Fusion 360. If this helps, give it a thumbs up and spread the word. Have a great week, everyone.